a reading from the book of Samuel. Saul took 3,000 pig men from all Israel and went in search of David and his men in the direction of the wild goat grass. When he came to the sheepfolds along the way, he found a cave which he entered to relieve himself. David and his men were occupying the inmost recesses of the cave. David's servant said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will deliver your enemy into your grasp. Do with him as you see fit. So David moved up and steadily cut off an end of Saul's mantle. Afterward, however, David regretted that he had cut off an end of Saul's mantle. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master. The Lord's anointed as to lay a hand on him, for he is the Lord's anointed. While these words of David restrained his men and would not permit them to attack Saul, Saul then left the cave and went on his way. David also stepped out of the cave, calling to Saul, My Lord, the King. When Saul looked back, David bowed to the ground in homage and asked Saul, Why do you listen to those who say, David is trying to harm you. You see for yourself today that the Lord just now delivered you into my grasp in the cave. I had some thought of killing you, but I took pity on you instead. I decided I will not raise a hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed and a father to me. Look here at this end of your mantle which I hold. Since I cut off an end of your mantle and did not kill you, see and be convinced that I plan no harm and no rebellion. I have done you no wrong, though you are hunting me down to take my life. The Lord will judge between me and you, and the Lord will exact justice from you in my case. I shall not touch you. The old proverb says, from the wicked comes forth wickedness, so I will take no action against you. Against whom are you on campaign, O king of Israel? Whom are you pursuing, a dead dog or a single flea? The Lord will be the judge. He will decide between me and you. May he see this and take my part and grant me justice beyond your reach. When David finished saying these things to Saul, Saul answered, Is that your voice, my son David? And Saul wept aloud. Saul then said to David, You are in the right rather than I. You have treated me generously while I have done you harm. Great is the generosity you showed me today when the Lord delivered me into your grasp and you did not kill me. For if a man meets his enemy, does he send him away unharmed? May the Lord reward you generously for what you have done this day. And now... I know that you shall surely be king, and that sovereignty over Israel shall come into your possession. The word of the Lord. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. 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 Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. In the shadow of your wings I take refuge. So harm pass by. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. 
I call to God the Most High, to God my benefactor. May he send from heaven and save me. May he make those a reproach who trample upon me. May God send his mercy and his faithfulness. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Above all the earth be your glory. For your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and instructing to us the message of reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve. Simon, whom he named Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom he named Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I was preparing for today's Mass, and I read the list of the 12 apostles, I remembered something that Kadna Arinze of Nigeria said in one of his catechisms, that today we have young people in the church, the youth specifically, who know the names of their favorite football club players. So if, let's say, your favorite football club is Manchester United, you know the names of all the players, including the reserve players, but you don't know the names of the 12 apostles. It's just a shame. And it means that we are not doing too well as families within the church, because he was talking about family catechism, where every family should have a copy of the Catholic Catechism, and every day, especially in the evening before they go to bed, the father or the mother reads one or two paragraphs so that together as a family, they can reflect on it and go to bed. He says, if we do that, we will build stronger Catholic families. So I just remember that, and I thought I could share with you. So... The young people who are here, the students who are here, I know you know the names of your favorite football players. Know the names of Jesus' football players also. The 12 apostles. Know their names. It's only 12. It's not too difficult. Today's first reading from the book of 
First Samuel, we've been reading from this book for quite some time, reminds us of this incident where Saul was pursuing David to kill him because he saw David as a threat to he being a king. He, he felt that David had, you know, had been favored, and so he wanted to kill him so that he can secure his kinship. And David gets this perfect opportunity, which his own followers will tell him that, look, David, as for this, it is God. God has, he has released this man into your hands. Let us, even if you will not kill him, let us kill him for you. David said, no. He said, no, I won't do that. And I think this is one of the reasons why David was God's favorite. The fact that even before Jesus Christ came, he practiced love your enemy. Even before Jesus Christ came, David practiced love your enemy. Because Jesus was the first person to preach love your enemy. It's never been preached before. How can you love your enemy? Somebody wants to kill you. Somebody wants to destroy you. You love the person? No way. At least avoid the person. But Jesus will go further to say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And David practiced that. But I also believe that he refusing to kill Saul was very practical. David knew, even as a young boy, even as a child, when he was a shepherd, that he'd been anointed to be king of Israel. He knew just that the time for him to take the throne was not yet up. And if he's going to begin his kingship by killing other kings, then what is the guarantee that one day somebody also will not kill him? I think it was very practical because he had followers. If he had encouraged them, let us kill Saul. And he had done that. <laughs> one day when he becomes king, somebody will also plan that, let us kill David. And it will be done. And so... Sometimes when we follow God's commandment telling us not to do something or to do something, it may not just be for the other person. It could also be for us. If God says we should love our enemies, it may not just be for the enemy, but it could also be for us. We may be preserving our own lives and our own legacies in the process. We pray for strength to live according to God's word. And if we are finding it too difficult to do that, then let us call on the saints that we honor. Today we honor Saint Agnes. She was a virgin. She was a martyr. She died for her faith and for her love for Jesus Christ. They have done it. We can also do it. Shall we rise and pray? Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, successors to the first apostles and personally chosen by Jesus, that they may be faithful to the mission he has entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the oppressed, for the helpless unborn, for all who are pursued and hunted down by the mighty, that God may grant them justice beyond the reach of the powerful ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may treat our enemies with a height, magnanimity, and generosity that David showed to Saul, that the Lord may take our part and keep us from harming our own souls with revenge and hatred. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, and victims of natural disasters and conflict, that God may send them his mercy and faithfulness, and give them refuge under the shadow of his wings. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us, that they may come to know God's mercy personally, as he purifies them and welcomes them into heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The silence of our hearts, let us pray for our personal intentions. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. God our Father, through the intercession of St. Agnes, whom we honor today, and all your saints, grant to us, your children who gather before you this morning, the grace and the courage to live according to your word, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 